Did you know that in the last three years, over 6.2 million illegal immigrants have crossed the border? And that's what we know about. I've seen reports ranging from 10 to 12 million. You'll see that a massive portion of those are actually single adults. This is from U.S. Customs and Border Protection. And according to U.S. officials, Hamas militants are likely already crossing the border or have the potential to, especially if background checks aren't being performed. We don't truly know where they're coming from, and we sure as heck don't know what the intent is. What the intention is of coming to the country. It could be just open borders, right? It's much more lenient now than it was in the past and much easier to get in. It could be other benefits that we're seeing and hearing about that are enticing people to come over. But what could this mean for us? What could this mean for you and me? What could this mean for Americans? It could mean a few things. It could mean nothing. It could mean nothing at all. It could mean just a lot of people, a lot more than usual, coming over to the U.S. because those folks don't want to be where they're at now. It's really hard where they're at now. It's hard over here. So I don't I don't know of an ideal place to live on the globe right now. That's just me. Now what myself and others are concerned about here is you've got all different types of individuals from different places, some being flown over from who knows where, coming into the country. And a lot of these countries really don't like us. They don't like the government. They don't like what the government's done in their area, region of the world which means they're probably not gonna like the American people very much. It doesn't take much scrolling or searching to see these other stories in other countries like France where crime has spiked after the influx of immigrants coming into their country. So there is a concern about what that's gonna mean to the American people, to the American infrastructure. You've got the Chicago mayor just yesterday coming up and saying every service of the city is in jeopardy of collapsing due to the massive influx of immigrants. Sanctuary cities are now claiming they don't have the money. Billions of dollars are gonna be going to supporting the infrastructure needed for the influx of immigrants. So obviously it's gonna hit really hard on the infrastructure, but what about other risks? Well, what I am mostly concerned about, the infrastructure has me, has me concerned. The intent is what has me very concerned. I'm not gonna say scared, I'm gonna say concerned because you have millions of people from sometimes unknown origins and definitely unknown intent. And even if that 1% of 10 million, hypothetically 10 million, it's still 100,000 people. And let's cut it down even further. A thousand people with bad intent out of six to 10 million, I think is pretty conservative. I think that's fair. That's a very large number of people across the country to do harm. I'm not saying it's going to be another Hamas attack like it was on Israel on October 7th, but what about bombings? What about door to door, which isn't going to end as well if you try that in America, just saying. But still, you've got a lot of harm that could be done. And just to get it out there, I can't imagine what folks, genuine folks, are going through when they try to get to a better place where they take their kids or they send their kids without them to get to a better place to live because the place that they're at is not safe. I'm not gonna name country names. Imagine how difficult of a decision that would be. So I'm not, I'm not dinging on immigrants here. I'm dinging on the way that it's being done and in the unbelievable volume it's being done in. So that's what I'm mostly concerned about is an attack of some sort. With that said, what can you do about it? Right? I like to talk on the channel, what can you do to prepare? The top things I'm doing to prepare, most people aren't gonna be able to do or they're not gonna wanna do. But that is number one, staying out of cities. I know, some of you are like, what the hell, I can't do that. Staying away from mass population centers, staying away from large events. We've got New Year's coming, right? It's, what the heck, man? You're telling me not to go to the New Year party? I know, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of those out there. But think about it. There's a constant decline with the relations between Iran, Iran's proxies, and America. And if it gets to that point where ties are severed and what, whatever ties are left, orders are sent to people over here that we now I have, we have no idea what the intent is. They're gonna go for the biggest bang for their buck and they're gonna go as seen in other terrorist activities and terrorist events. They're gonna hit where massive amounts of people are. It's just the way it is. I'm not saying it's right. So if at all possible, I would completely avoid public transportation, cities, massive population centers, and massive events where lots of people are going to be present. That's just me. I'm just not gonna go. I'm not, I'm not, I don't do those things too much anyway. 
So not a big loss for me. And I know that not everybody's gonna take that advice. And, and here's an important distinction. We don't want to fear. We don't wanna live in fear because terrorists win, right? The people that are trying to hurt us, that's what they want. And we don't want to give in to that. But we also have to be able to take in as a country and prepare and put limits and thresholds on how much risk we are bringing into the country. And right now, I just don't see that. I, I don't see that at all. So in the meantime, I'm going to avoid heavy population centers or events entirely. And again, that's not gonna be possible and not many people are gonna like hearing that. But if it's anything like we saw on October 7th where it was mostly people coming over and shooting people, and of course using explosives, but mostly they brought their boomsticks we would be able to have at least a chance against that, right? As civilians walking through town, walking through even at a major party, if you are able to carry, if you are able to defend yourself and others via the Second Amendment, you've got a higher chance. And that's gonna, that's gonna even some of the odds somewhat. Smaller firearm like a handgun is not gonna do much against a fully automatic weapon with high capacity magazines, but it's gonna be better than nothing. So if you wanna take that risk, I would highly encourage if you haven't already, to be able to defend yourself with your own boomstick. And it's not just getting a firearm, it is training. And it's not just training at a range once a year, it's training on the move. It's, it's pushing yourself to your limits in real world capacity and situations. And that training takes time, it takes money, you're not gonna get there after one or two sessions. So this is something hopefully you've been doing for a longer period of time that's an absolute must. If you're gonna be carrying a firearm, I would do as much training as you possibly could. There are always people with bad intent that plan to take or harm others. It's simple as that. You should be able to defend yourself from that evil. Now the next one is something that you can start at any age. You can start at any time. It's one of those things just like firearm training. You're gonna to wanna to do, you're gonna to wanna to get as much training under that belt as possible, right? Learning to fight is so important. And it's so important in many ways. One, it builds that confidence. It gets your motivation up. It brings self-discipline into your life. It allows you to overcome fear. It allows you to overcome some of those challenges in your life because if you're able to learn to fight, right, that inner confidence, that self-esteem, it shoots through the roof and you get to stay fit, et cetera, all those things I mentioned. But this helps in your way of thinking under duress. Under stressful situations, Learning to fight, I believe, really puts you at a higher point in maturity and being able to allow yourself to think through critical and dangerous situations faster than you would because you have more discipline than somebody that just plays video games all day. Now, I'm not saying bringing a fist to a gunfight or a bomb fight, bomb fight is going to be a good idea. I'm not saying that at all the other benefits that you get, it's, it's a win-win when you learn to fight and you have that discipline, you go consistently, it's gonna up your chances, there's no doubt about it. But in this case, this specific case, that is going to definitely help in awareness as well. And that brings me to my last point, which is raising your awareness. And you can do this in a couple ways. You can do it through training, through martial arts of some kind. It gets you thinking about your surroundings, it gets you thinking about other people. Do I need to defend myself in a situation that I'm gonna be facing today, right now, in the moment? It's gonna help all around. But being able to see before and feel something before it happens, that's almost clairvoyance, right? If you were able to get an indicator, spidey sense, like Spider-Man, and be able to tell before something was to happen, that it's gonna happen. You don't know what it is, but you've got a bad feeling. That is the awareness of your surroundings that you can work on. And there's a great book, it's called Left of Bang. And the point of that being, you wanna be on the left side of bang, not the right side after it happened. You wanna be on the left side so you have something, you have time, even if it's seconds. You have some time, more than you would otherwise, to do something about the situation that you happen to be in. That's where learning to fight with a martial art of some kind, jujitsu, Muay Thai, my favorite, and firearm training. Those are your force multipliers. By having those under your belt, you are able to force multiply your action on whatever threat that you are facing at that moment. The best thing to do is to not be in the area that something is going down. Hands down, don't expose yourself to that risk. But if you find yourself in that situation or you choose to be in a situation where 
something could occur like we're talking about in this video, having those force multipliers is critical. But ultimately, it's, it's the levels of awareness, white, yellow, orange, and red. White being completely ignorant, and completely oblivious to the world around you, to the situation around you that you're currently in. And that's definitely, that's the last place you wanna be. That is sheep on a pasture and there's a wolf standing right there and the sheep's like, I, I got no idea what's going on, I'm just eating this grass. Yellow is where you wanna be. You wanna be self-aware. You wanna be aware of your surroundings. You wanna be able to scan, look for exits when you go to a restaurant or a mall, et cetera. You wanna be able to identify and scan people and again, scan your surroundings. So you wanna be in yellow all the time. You never wanna be in white. If it comes to orange, things are heating up. And from orange to red, you're looking at a potential threat in orange to a definite threat you're taking action in red. What I just covered was the Cooper color code. I'll shoot a link in the description. So if you just want, you don't wanna read the book, Left of Bang, I'll put an item in the description for that as well. You just want the color codes, what I just discussed in more detail, I'll put a link in the description. But I highly recommend reading the full book, Left of Bang, amazing book. We should all be required. It should be in the schools that we are learning this stuff. Highly recommended. And if you know about these things that I talk about, open a discussion because the comments are by far the best part of these videos, by far. Way better than the videos I put out there. Throw in the comments if you have anything to add. This is what I'm concerned about. This is just one man's opinion. I know others share very similar concerns, but I'm not gonna live in fear and neither should you. No matter what it is, we face thousands of things that could end civilization, end our lives in an instant. And we need to live in the now, no fear, no panic, and that's why people prepare, right? That's why we know that sometimes it rains, sometimes it shines. And I know you're sick of hearing it, but it really helps a small channel when you like, comment, and subscribe, or share. It gets that conversation going. We learn a ton in the comments, and it helps a small channel grow. All right, folks, as always, stay practical, stay safe. I'll catch you on the next one.